Jim, let's talk a little bit about a couple guys that uh, had some pretty good starts for the Orioles the other day. Ubaldo Jimenez, Chris Tillman. Let's talk about Ubaldo first. What are you seeing from him this year as opposed to last year? Well, I think it's a pretty well-known uh, fact that last year I think was very frustrating for everybody. I mean, obviously, if you're Dan Duquette and you invest $50 million, you're going, boy, we want the same guy we saw the last month of uh, 2013, 4-0. I mean, ERA of 1, maybe that's a little bit unrealistic. How did he do that? Well, he had great rhythm. He had great fastball command. So he didn't throw as much going into 2014, so he starts the season. And oh, he, I, I think, again, when a lot of times when you're from the Dominican or you're Hispanic, maybe you think, well, this guy doesn't care because he doesn't talk or can't verbalize. But uh, Mickey Calloway, who is pitching, goes, says nobody cares more than him. So we have somebody that's very frustrated. He, when he pitched well early in 2014, they didn't score a lot of runs. When he pitched poorly, they didn't score a lot of runs. Walked a lot more guys. Couldn't pitch as long as he wanted to. I mean, a multitude of things. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they made some adjustments. He said the hands going over the head in front of him. Dave Wallace did that. And then the Orioles, you know, we always talk about coaching guys up, Davey, as you know. I mean, you, you know, you do it with kids. You want to make people better. And now they bring in Ramon Martin. Martinez, 20-game winner from the Dominican. Okay, how do we get the ball down in the zone? How do we maybe take that big, long, kind of gangly wind-up and concise it? They work on that in the spring training. He struggled his first two starts, and the rest is history. Throws more strikes. And the big difference last year, I mean, the, the, the runner in scoring position number was a little over 200. He just didn't throw the ball over the plate as much as he would like. I, I look at what he's doing, and I'm trying to evaluate how he's done that. I know that he, last year at the end of the season, they talked about, let's not go over our head. Let's try to keep it as compact as we can. But he still has that little slap thing at the bottom. That hasn't changed. That's not going to change, of course. That's how he's thrown probably since he was five but I don't see a ton of difference necessarily to the naked eye, yet that fastball command is there, which allows him to throw that splitter whenever he wants. Well, that, I think, in, you know, you talked about it after his uh, shutout on, on Sunday about the fact that if you get strike one, all of a sudden you get into the counts, and, you know, of course, on Sunday against the Indians, he was about as good as you ever could be. Great curveball, great splitter. But I think the other thing is, and uh, you know, uh, whether we're going to talk about Ubaldo Jimenez or Chris Tillman, it's confidence. And when you have confidence... You're relaxed. I mean, we're holding these microphones very relaxed because we're so confident that we know what we're talking about, even though we know that's not the case. But grip pressure is very important. And I look at Ubaldo last year. You know, $50 million is a lot of money, and I think he wanted to earn it. He just couldn't. He didn't have any way of doing it. What about Chris Tillman? I think over the last couple of starts, clearly the results are a little bit better, but he's in a similar situation. Sometimes he's a big, tall guy. He can get long and out of sync. What are you seeing different from Chris Tillman, say, over maybe the last four or five stars as opposed to beginning of the year? Well, I, you know, I didn't realize this, but he was two and seven. I was once two and seven, and, you know, you're usually worrying about, you know, your next five starts, but... Um, he told me that in 2012, which was really when he came back to the big leagues, started out 0-8 in Norfolk, ended up 8-8. Eight eight. So he's gone through a period where he won eight in a row. So he's 2-7. and seven. Now he's, what, 6-7. and seven. Um, He got a kind of a free pass when they scored 13 runs and he couldn't even get the win up in Toronto. We all know how great a, a hitting team Toronto is. But way over on the right side of the rubber, he's moved over a little bit. Um, he got knack, knocked out, got an extra two days, got enough extra time to throw. And on Sunday against Cleveland, it looked like the old Chris Tillman. I mean, he had great arm strength. Um, you know, Matt Weeders, they have this bond. They've been together since Bowie back in, what, I don't know, 2007 or 8. Or eight yeah. yeah, and he's never shook, shook off a pitch. I'm not sure how smart that is. But <laughs> with that said, you know what I'm saying. But the point is, whatever Matt puts down, he throws it. They didn't throw a lot of change-ups until the fourth inning. You know, Cleveland's struggling a little bit, but you know what? For the Orioles to get to where they want to go this year, they need Chris to do what he did last year. I mean, 20 out of his last 21 starts, uh, three runs or less. If he can get back there the way are, the Orioles are playing, he's going to win a lot of games. You know, what about that? You specifically said he needs to get going. He did this time last year, but you got Ubaldo and Chris Tillman, two of the guys that the club was probably hoping or expecting to be maybe in that one, two, at least in the top three. It looks like they're pitching better now. Couldn't they get back to that one, two? And what's that mean to the club? of course, mm -hmm. in the rotation. Well, I, I don't really. I look at Wayne and Shannon and I'm going, here's a guy that's pitch as well as anybody. They don't score when he plays. If they do, they blow the lead or whatever. So we know he's going to give him quality starts. You know, Gonzalez is like, he's, he's like some guy, the eye of the needle. Some, you know, he just knows how to get you out. Is he he's still like on a, the team? Yeah, he's like a okay. quiet assassin. Uh, you know, he's got four pitches. I think the big problem is, you know, Bud Norris, this is a free agent year. 
Uh, we all know Bud. He can be, he's like a drip line of Red Bull. I mean, uh, uh, you know, he's pitched well his last two starts. I really think that, uh, you know, with Kevin Gosman, with, you know, throwing 93 to 99, you're always kind of looking over your shoulder. But I, the way to circumvent that is just pitch well. So he's pitched well his last two starts, had a little bit of an implosion up in Boston. Hopefully that won't be the case. Stuff's been a lot better. Struggled early on, but that started in spring training. So I think all in all, bullpen's been fabulous. Starters, you know, you got six of them just like you did out of spring training where you can always have Kevin Gosman as your backup. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome.